to turn the Brigadier himself into Nicholas Stockton. I like the notice on the door. It's a good thing I don't read well. <laughs> wonderful. Okay, do you want to, do you want to stand up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, don't you, Adrian, don't you know this? You can't salute in the British Army without a cap on. It's only those Americans who do that all the time to you, uh, with, with a uniform. But seriously, so I'm going to have on. I haven't got a uniform. I got my cricket outfit on. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Where is it? You can play again. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. If you could just. That's okay. Right. No, it's just at the end. Think about the end. Now, during. I don't mind. Whenever. <laughs> Nice to see you all. And this very nice weekend. I think Twelve years, I think Twelve? Twelve years. Yeah. Right. The thing that's going to be on everybody's mind is Battlefield, which you are returning in for the first time of season 26. Am I not right? You are right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Right, yeah. you are right, indeed, yes. We just finished doing that uh, about two weeks ago, and we filmed up in Rutland Water, it's near the town of Stanford, and we had wonderful weather, and we got lots of filming in. I think it comes to a great fun story. Actually, can you hear us, Bud? Can everybody hear us? You see, they can probably can, can't you? So we probably don't need the mic. Right. If you can't, though, will you make me a promise? If you can't hear what I want to say, say, speak up. You're right, you're allowed to say it. And then we'll try the mic. Right? So probably it'll be all right. Both of them will be right. Now, in the battlefield, we have various links with all distant parts, with Gene Marsh returning in the same story as you. Yes. You from? Dalek Master from Dalek Master Clan, where she played my sister, and who killed me. <laughs> <laughs> nice way. I mean, you, have you watched this just like that? You'll, you'll be off in that story, and she'll be fine. Now, are you going to quote me with now the same has not happened here? Uh, she doesn't kill me off, no. She doesn't kill me off. This is the <laughs> yes, skipping on the subject. Going back to your very beginnings with your association with Dr. Lee, Darling Alstrapan was your first story association. You were actually up for the Crusade. Mm. Yes, it was a story about the Crusades with William Hartnell, and um, Douglas Campbell was written that. And uh, I went up to see him. But I didn't get the part of King Richard, which was a shame, but um, it was just as well because Julian Glover, who played it, was much better at casting for the part than I was. But he did remember me, Dougie. He remembered you not only for Master Plan, but for the Web of Fear, where you were not, shall we say, Ledbridge Stewart as you were originally there. Who was the original one? Oh yes, the Web of Fear, that was the first time the character appeared, Ledbridge Stewart. Well, <coughs> originally, I, I, absolutely, originally I was going to play a character called Captain Knight in the Web of Fear, the story of Lucky Yet, with Captain Trump. Captain Knight. And then about two days before the, uh, before we started rehearsal, the director rang up and said, look, Nick, do you mind um, playing the colonel instead of the captain? And um, because, you know, the actor was playing the colonel, I had to leave the program or go and get a job or something like that. And I said, no, I don't mind at all. I mean, it's promotion, that's a good start. I said, I know the money will be the same, you know, the BBC, and it was exactly the same. <laughs> don't change the money. So um, that was... A complete, very fortuitous, because if that hadn't happened, if that actor, with David Langston, had played the part, the real year would never have happened. I, this would never have happened, this 21 years of this character, it would never have happened. So that's 
the Lord. Oh, how are you? Something like that. So I owe David Mackey a large rent by next year. I haven't seen him for a long time. But he really was going to play in the film and then had to back up the last bit. So I was off the park. And then he went to that park. So, and then the rest of his history, as it were. Well, wasn't it originally felt that you were a bit young to play the film? Yes. The producer at the time, Miss Lloyd, uh, Douglas Cameron said, I want this one to play it. And so I was told I had to put a moustache on. And I had not an idea of doing that to start with. Um, so I did put a moustache on. And for many, many years, I had, I think I had about eight, or maybe even nine different moustaches. And they weren't terribly good, any of them, I don't think, actually, because they looked a bit stuck on. Some, I mean, the first one looked enormously black. Then it, I mean, in the filming, you know, damp filming conditions, in every one half would droop off. <laughs> and I thought some of them to do a quick stick-up job. And um, so, um, John Purvis said, he, why on earth don't you grow your own? And I had this idea at the time that um, the way my moustache is now, it, which is true, it, it, didn't, it doesn't grow very, very military, so I thought I might get a military moustache. But it was a great mistake, because um, by the time the fire got to start, I decided that uh, I'd grow mine. It's much easier to have your own moustache, a real, real rather than a pulse one on. And uh, so I had my little three doctors, uh, five doctors, and um, of course, for Battlefield now, where I, I don't know, I might show it off next week. Maybe I'm doing it on the park, I don't know. Thank you. But, what? Thank you. Yes. But I, I was told I had to put on the stars, and I didn't look old enough. I know, that's quite a compliment, dude. Actually, funny enough, I went up to the park the other day, and um, I didn't get it. I was told it was to play a retired Indian Army colonel in his <laughs> 60s. And actually, and, uh, obviously, you're too young for this. And he thought that was, well, I suppose it's uh, some alleviation for not getting the part. But the trouble is, the other half of the characterization of this part that I was up for, retired in the army in the 60s, but the other half of the character was, who is permanently drunk? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just thought I'd uh, introduce that to go to levity there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right. Right, now, obviously it worked to such a degree that you were brought back the invasion. The invasion. <coughs> right. Now, the unit was established with this story. Yes. That was a trial run? That was a trial run because uh, John Turley was about to take over from Patrick Trump and, you know, he had a three-year contract, I, I suppose, or he had a renewable, and I was given a two-year contract, which was, well, went past the invasion, which was very nice because I was, uh, my daughter was just born, so I needed the security, and it was very nice idea. Yes, yeah. the invasion was a trial run. See if the idea of units worked, you know, with the bottom of that. And um, I guess it did work, because they're very popular union stories. <laughs> now, the invasion was the story where the costume that you so despised was in the future. What do you think of the bugbear with that? Oh, the horrid costume. Um, I don't think. Do you have that invasion? I'm trying. You know, that awful jumpsuit. Yes, I didn't like that at all. Didn't like it. No, the costume designer had this idea, and. Uh, I didn't know that I had to invasion. Yes, I had to wear it the whole first season with John Perkins. <coughs> yes, I didn't like the costume at all. The berries don't suit me. Pete Cap suits me better. And, um, <laughs> and, and you know, army uniform, bully, bully, or service dress suit. Me. But this was sort of like an all in one combination suit. I don't know, I looked pretty ridiculous. So I managed <laughs> to take Baroness up the GI Bill. Well, I'm a strong admission. Look, must have another frock, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Different costume. <laughs> Now, uh, as your stories progressed, obviously... Are we still on the invasion? No. <laughs> oh, no. We no. moved on. We no. moved on. Well, you don't think I have to tell that story about that line I have. Oh, you can do it if you want to. Do you think so? Yeah, go on. Do you think... Do you, do you, think do you want to hear the story about the line? Yeah. 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 Um, well, that was a story which involved um, helicopters, as you know, along that, and... Um, uh, was going on, and a lot of the lines in those days actually were rather sort of, you were just barking orders out, and later we'd come off the lines later, as well, right, so I might give you more depth, humour, humanity. But one of the lines I had to say was to one of my captains on a walkie-talkie, I had to say, uh, uh, my captain at that time, his Christian name was Jimmy, not the actor's name, I really had to say, and I did it without a flicker, I, say, I said, Jimmy, I want you to get on my chopper and tell Benjamin I am <laughs> 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 
self entrance and lay on the jeep. Good <laughs> life they were in. How many takes? <laughs> one take, one take, one take, one take. Yes, well, I, I didn't break up. Now, as the stories went on, obviously you came face to face with a lot of poor experts wearing pieces of rubber that didn't fit. <laughs> what? Well, I don't know. Like, the monsters. I know the monsters. I know, I know you mean the monsters. I thought they were all good. Which one was called that? Not any of them. I was just going to. <laughs> not a maggot. No, 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 no. Well, there were actors inside there. No, there were actors inside. Don't jump, maggots. Yes, now. How did you feel about the maggot extras? The maggot extras? Did you know what they were? <laughs> I don't understand the question. <laughs> in the quarry, yes. the hordes and hordes of maggots were in actual fact inflated, shall we say, uh, rubber gloves. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Segmented rubber gloves. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, well, right. No, they weren't. <laughs> this is they the weren't. They, they were. were. They were operated by me. No, 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 the quarry. The quarry. The quarry. Yes, where the maggots were. Is this the lowest form you've ever had to work with? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You're not going to name names on that one? No, no, no. <laughs> no, well, they're all, they're all, um, they haven't got names, mate, or something. No, not the names, mate. They're not the names they're to work with. Oh, no, no, no names, no factors, no. Not because of the... Not because of the wall, not in the mess. Not in the mess, obviously the mess. Yes, what, what was I saying? What, what were you saying? What was I saying? I was talking about maggots. Oh, right. Now, going on to... Um, you know, rubber monsters or rubber face. Rubber monsters, yes. Can you feel sorry for that? Would you have liked to have got in one of those costumes yourself? No. <laughs> no. No particular feelings for that? No, it is a fall break. No, I don't want to get in there. Oh, no, I, I don't like acting on all that stuff. Oh, no, 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 but, now, leaping on, on physical one anyway. <laughs> leaping on the great leaps and bounds, because obviously everybody wants to hear about battlefield, don't they? Yes! <laughs> now, of course, there was a great changeover, as far as you were concerned, between doctors with perfect and fake cat. Yes. Did you feel that there was a great difference between the two? The John Perth and Tom Baker, uh, we yes, well, they were they were very different people. Yeah. They were very different people. I mean, uh, Tom Baker, when he took over when we were doing the giant robot, he was a great lad. We used to go out a lot of the evenings after us. So. To do what? Well, we, well, I don't know, to go out in the tunnel sometimes or something like that. And he'd have this toothbrush in his top pocket. And um, uh, I, I wouldn't have much. Anyway, he, he came to stay with me once. He did. He came to stay with me one night. And um, my children rushed in the bathroom one morning and there was Tom having a bath. Tom, <laughs> I think Tom was a bit surprised. <laughs> but, um, yes, Tom made it down. Uh, John did not least step for that man, he said, Tom was. Well, uh, no. I was married, wasn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Going on to terror design, now, another bit of good luck there, like you. Costume. Why don't you like this? Well, I didn't like. Actually, it's not bad. It wasn't a bad story. I, it's quite popular. But um, I mean, there were a couple of things. Uh, Douglas, Danny Campbell didn't wasn't very happy with the scarlet side. I mean, it didn't work terribly well. And we had a couple of problems with the monsters. And but more than that, I don't think I liked it because I thought this is the end. Because I knew the unit was being phased out and being got rid of, and I thought, you know. That's it, it's going to be the end, and there was just not a very good atmosphere around, actually, during the main one, which is why I suppose it's one of the ones I like the least working on. I think it's probably a quite good story, it's quite a popular story. Is that what you're saying? Indeed. Um, but that's, the re- I guess, the reason why I didn't like it so much, because I thought, that's it, that we're never going to hear from Brigadier ever again, so I want to do this. Well, I'm glad to say it's wrong. Yeah. Very wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Now, don't you feel that it was particularly uncanny that there was a certain prediction made in that about a certain lady? Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, that's where the brigadier...